in order to create strong societies, we need strong, prof strong professions, strong library professions, and also strong library associations. And this starts with effective and good communication. In my opinion, we can do a lot better in this area. Um, there is a massive potential of new and interesting ways to extend and to improve traditional concepts of communication in the profession. And for this reason, I decided to highlight three recent examples I came across during the last couple of months uh, on how to do that. The first example I want to show you to uh, this morning is a, the virtual membership meeting of the American Library Association that has been held uh, that has been held for the first time in June this year and um, it gave about 500 participants um, of, the, of this webinar the chance to get in touch with the leaders of the association. So um, not only the president of the association took part in that webinar, it was also the, the executive director for example and these people gave um, reports um, about the actions of the association but most importantly the um, participants of the webinar had the good chance to raise questions about membership. And the good thing about this action is that um, most of these participants are usually not in a position to attend the Congress in person uh, or the conference of the LAA. So that is really a new way to, to engage with members of the Dutch Association. The second example is the call for proposals that the Australian Library and Information Association recently published, and this is the um, call for proposals for next year's annual, the um, ALIA Information Online 2030. And I think this is a really good example of how to open um, the, the process of, of call for papers, because in that case, as you can see, um, the organizers decided to get rid of the of abstracts, of the peer review po process. Instead, they opened this uh, whole procedure and um, created it, uh, designed it much more diverse than usually. So people will have the chance to send in abstracts, um, but they can propose any kind of session, like a workshop, a colloquium, um, even a provocation, uh, as it's stated on the website. And um, the most interesting thing for me here is the extended submissions, because people can, if they are accepted in the first place, they can go on by submitting a written discussion, a video, an audio recording, a slide cast, or even a visual plan. So I think that's really um, a good way of doing this kind of call for proposals. The third short example is the Library Camp 2012 in the UK. This is an art conference. I'm sure you have already heard about this concept. It's a participant-driven approach with a lot of discussions. It works a workshop-style atmosphere, and the program is built on site with the participants. And in this case, um, the art conference tried to raise money to secure funds by going to a crowdfunding platform to crowdfunder. And um, so in that case, we have two very innovative and new content, uh, concepts um, to engage with the community. So these were just three brief examples of how you can extend and um, maybe improve the communication within our profession. So my message this morning is rethink professional communication. Um, this will not only help students and new professionals to be better involved in what is going on in our profession, um, the good thing is that this will benefit everyone. And as I said in the beginning, um, we need to have effective communication to be a strong association or to be a strong profession. Um, and this will keep us really in a position where we can respond to any kind of situation. Thanks a lot.